Okay. All right. Here we go. Ariel, do you want to go next and introduce yourself? Great. Yes. Thank you uh, very much, Manjeet, for uh, that, that uh, uh, timely reminder. Um, my name is Ariel. I am the program manager uh, for tools, practices and systems at the Alan Turing Institute, which is the overarching uh, program that um, uh, the Turing Way belongs to. Um, and you will see me floating around the book dash as well. As I mentioned, I am based in Boston, so I'll be joining the afternoon sessions because I am five hours behind you guys uh, over in the UK. I'm going to hand over to Alden. Hi, I'm Alden. I'm a senior researcher at the Turing Institute, also in tools, practices, and systems. And I'm going to be delivering this GitHub workshop. This is the first time I've delivered it. So, uh, you know, if I if I trip over my words a little bit, I apologize, but I think it's a nice small group and please feel free to interrupt with any questions. Um, and yeah, at any time, just unmute or raise your hand or put it in the chat, whatever, whatever you have, especially when we get to the interactive part. So uh, I think Eric, or Alex is going to kick us off with an intro to the Turing way and tell you a bit about the book dash. But do we need to, Ariel, do you have everyone's GitHub handles? I think we should, I think we should do in the uh, shared document that um, we've just asked people to. Uh, so um, Federico and uh, who else have we got? We've got Robikia. Oh, so sorry, sorry. I, I have no idea how to pronounce that name. Um, and anyone else who has joined us recently, if you can sign in and um, let us know. Uh, your GitHub handle that will enable us to um, do some uh, manual back end wizardry on our end as well. Um, I've, oh. Should we also have them go to this issue now and start commenting because then it'll also give you their GitHub handles directly. Oh. Yep. So uh, <laughs> uh, let me just uh, copy that link over into the chat. So this we've got a little icebreaker in GitHub itself. Um, you'll see it as work in progress book dash GitHub training. Um, if you can head there, there is a question at the end, which is what activity is, what's an activity you could do for a long time without getting bored? You want to ask that, uh, answer that question by commenting below. Um, I will say, um, going for long walk. Um, and that will help us to capture your GitHub handles. And while you do that, what I can start doing is talking to you about what the Turing Way is, in case you don't know it yet. You probably have been in one of our collaborations cafes. If you haven't been there, there's going to be another one on next Wednesday. So you are all welcome to come. But the Turing Way, it's a Wikipedia type of book put together by researchers and experts. Uh, for us, it's actually four things at once. It's a book, a community where people come together to collaboratively, collaboratively write chapters, build and maintain resources, share their skills and ideas around best practices in data science and research. Somewhere where open source principles are applied in the development and maintenance of this project and collaboration. The process of this is backbone of our project. Uh, the aim of the Turing Way is to make color collaboratively your reusable and transparent research too easy not to do. Um, the Turing Way, as you will see, it's a, it's a work in progress and belongs to the community of contributors. You're going to become a contributor if you are not already are one. Uh, this, is, this means that everything is open by design and we collaborative we and collaboratively in practice, um, we use open source tools uh, as GitHub and open framework for collaborations, peer production and project sustainability so that users collaborate to build resources that are beneficial for them. Um, ultimately, this means that we aim to be open all the way down. In fact, we will argue that the Turing Way has grown within a short amount of time because it has been designed to be open. Um, the Turing Way right now has a different chapters or different guides. Um, one is the reproducibility one, the project design, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit lost here. Uh, 
Um, this means that this is open based design encourage practice. Um, sorry, this, this is not supposed to be said. But what we really want to emphasize is that writing a new chapter isn't the only way to get involved. So it's definitely something we'd love to see. And we always want to support more of you contributing to the chapters. Um, there are many ways to get involved in the Turing way and contributed in many way, in many, many ways, always require people to collaborate with each other and work collectively. Um, these are some of the examples that we have. Uh, mentor contributions, maintain and improve, share resources, review and update. And uh, today what we're going to see is the, how to use the a collaboratively tool GitHub to make this happen. And uh, I'm going to pass it to Alden now. Great, thanks. Can you um, end the share so that I can just share mine? I think it'll be easier. And if anyone has questions, please unmute or um, put them in the chat. Oh, I lost my, lost my mouse. Okay. Is my, I've got the window open and there's traffic. Can anyone hear background noise? Just let me know if, if my, my audio is not good and I will close it, but it's quite warm. Okay, where, here we go. Great, so do you see my screen now? The, the continuation yes. of this? Okay, great. So, with it, well, maybe, can you all just put in the chat what level of familiarity you have with GitHub? Any Anything is fine, from zero to you know, beginner, intermediate. Um, if you're going to get an idea of, since there are so few people, I wouldn't want to, uh, you know, be talking about stuff that everybody knows already. Okay, used a bit, zero, rusty, intermediate. Okay, so we're, we've got a bit of a range, um, which is totally fine. So obviously I'm gonna, you know, go to the zero because we have to start and uh, make sure we're, we're making it accessible for, for everyone. And of course we, we want you, you're here to learn. So um, what is GitHub? Um, so, well, First off, why are we using GitHub? Because the Turing way is at its core, a huge collaborative document. And it's challenging to create collaborative documents for many reasons. Uh, sorry, mouse. Um, especially in these days of open working, and sorry, um, remote working, where we are working asynchronously, we are in different time zones and locations, and that means our edits are gonna con conflict, which, um, you know, Git actually comes from, from software and we're using it for documents, but it's the same problems, right? Is that if multiple people are working on the same thing and they do edits that don't match up, how do you, how do you um, synchronize those and bring them together? Whoops, I skipped one. So what's the answer is versions. So instead of the problem that we've all, I'm sure, encountered where you send a Word document back and forth and you've got copy one, copy one, two, copy one, final, Copy one, two, final, 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 you know, all, all these silly uh, thinking you're done, adding a change, someone else adds a change. You don't know if you're working on the latest version. So that's what version control aims to fix is this problem of multiple versions out there floating around, no authoritative main version. And how do we, how do we solve that? So the answer is Git, which is a system for version control. And GitHub is an online platform that we use to, to use Git for version control. So this diagram gives us an idea of, you know, we have an original document here on the left in the green, someone removes something in the red, someone maybe edits something in the yellow. And if those things are in different places, then how do we bring them together to make something final? And this all happens through what we call pull requests and merges. And we're gonna get into the, um, into the vocabulary in a minute. So we like GitHub because it is, like I said, an online platform and it allows us collaboration all over the world, asynchronously bringing together different people working on the same thing to make to make one final version. Although I guess I shouldn't say final version because of course, you know, the, the Turing Way is a living document and we would never call it a final version, but one uh, main version that is available online at any given time. So why do you use GitHub? So you can host the project online. So not only does GitHub allow us to collaborate, it is actually where the book lives. All the, every word that's in the book is in the document in GitHub. And that, that's where the, that data lives. Um, it helps you work with contributors and collaborators. Of course, that's what this is all about. It provides a web interface for version control. So like I said, version control originates from software. 
where most people would be working on their local machine coding and then they would upload their new version using the Git um, software in order to, to do that version control. But GitHub allows us to access our data, our code, our, our documents online rather than going through the terminal on your computer. It can be used for project management and communication. So in addition to hosting the data and allowing you to work on it, it, it actually can help us do project management. So we can you know, assign tasks, create boards, do all that stuff, and then, and then talk to each other via GitHub, again, allowing asynchronous communication and collaboration um, to, to work on these things. And so it's useful for any project where you have a group of people working together on, on this, um, one output or even multiple outputs, but, but multiple people are going to be um, affecting the same output or editing the same output. Any questions? Break time. Again, don't feel shy if you want to unmute. <laughs> uh, can I expand this so I can see all of you? Not that. Okay, sorry, I'll stop messing with my, my GitHub window there, or not GitHub, Zoom. Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, so, okay, we'll keep going then. I'm gonna blast through this in record time. So how do we use GitHub for collaboration? So this is really the meat of this. We want to have you prepared when you start the book dash to be using GitHub because this really is where all the work gets done. So GitHub is based on a few different concepts and tools within the platform. There are issues, which we will show you actually the issue you've already seen. That's where you wrote in your answer to the icebreaker. So an issue is basically just a form where anyone can write down something. So there are different templates for these forms where you know if you're doing software and someone wants to report a bug, they report it as an issue and they might have all these fields they need to fill in. In our case, this issue was just a blank one where we wrote in you know an intro that we wanted you to read and we said, please comment below. So issues and their, their you know, subsequent comments are where people really do the collaborative asynchronous work where they say, well, I think we should try this. And then the next person says, okay, I've added that. Um, or, you know, what about this? And then, and then go back and forth. And um, you can also link, link your changes into the issue so everyone can see what you're doing. So forking a project is an important, really important kind of basic concept of GitHub. So basically, you have what's called a repository. So that's your, your you know, collection of whatever is hosted on, well, in this case on GitHub, the book. So the data, right, that makes up the book is hosted on GitHub. And um, we, when you fork it, it means you basically take, the, take it and you copy the whole thing. You make a version for yourself. So if I took the Turing way and I fork it, then I have a version under my GitHub username, Alden C, the Turing way, and I have a full copy of the entire thing. And I could, for instance, launch a copy locally of the Turing way. So I could see the whole book, you know, if I didn't, I could basically run the whole thing on my computer without, without looking at the internet version. And that is how we, that's kind of the fundamental concept of using Git because basically everyone's got their own forks. That's why it's called a fork, right? Everyone has their own version. And then in the end, we want to bring them back together. But that's how you'll work on it in a fork that you've created. And then we're also going to show you about writing and editing files. So again, in this case, the, the book is a collection of files, a collection of text files, right, that make up the, the, the copy and the text in the book. And so obviously you have to be able to edit those and write new ones if you want to add a chapter, for instance. And then the, the real, the, the fun part is making a pull request because that's when you take your fork and you say, okay, I want to add my fork back into the main, um, the main repository so that the changes I've made or the things I've added can show up in the book. So does that make sense ish everybody we'll get we'll get into a lot more detail so using issues for discussion i kind of cover this a little bit but this is it's just a discussion forum it's you know it's like facebook without the awfulness um so basically you say hey let's try this and someone says you know here's here's my advice or i don't think that's a good idea you know it's just simply a discussion really really quite straightforward um and just the way you've already done it in the issue we shared, you can just add comments, you can tag people, very useful if you want someone's attention to give you feedback on something. So we have a few guidelines though for issues. You want to provide enough detail, um, you know, especially if you're talking specifics about a change someone's made, 
you know, don't, don't just say, hey, this doesn't work or this, I don't like this. Every, every single document in GitHub has lines, line numbers, right? So you'll say on line 57, there's a typo, things like that. So detail. And, and, you know, we expect everyone to follow the code of conduct and be courteous and collaborative. So, you know, respond patiently, um, accept constructive feedback and be open to collaboration. Those are the basic guidelines that we would like you to follow in terms of um, using issues as a discussion platform. Like I said, no Facebook. Um, <laughs> we want this to be a happy place. So the way that we're going to um, create new content for the book or edit existing content is using a system called Markdown. So Markdown is a very simple language that allows you to write um, formatted text. So it's a markup language and it's really useful actually. We use it a ton, um, especially on a platform called HackMD. Um, has anyone used HackMD before? Can I get a, a raised hand or maybe a chat reaction? Um, oh no, my screen sharing is paused. Okay, I'm not seeing any HackMD, HackMD uh, aficionados. I'm gonna start my screen sharing again. Okay. Are you seeing that correctly? Yeah, can I get a nod? Looks good, okay. Um, so HackMD, I think I have another slide, hopefully. Markdown, sorry. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this sharing thing to go away. Okay, using Markdown to write files. So this is a very helpful, um, maybe Alex or Ariel, you can um, paste this, this guide into the chat so everyone can see. It really is, you know, you'll learn it in a flash. You just have to kind of play around with it. And, and HackMD is a very useful way to do that because you can do a split view where you have an editor and, a, and a, a view of what the formatted text will look like. So you can just play around, see what, what effects things have. You basically use certain symbols to, to denote, you know, bold, italic, um, bullet points, things like that. And, and you can make lists and checklists and all kinds of stuff. So we would, you know, we would encourage, if you have never used Markdown before, check out these links and just get a feel for it. But this really, you know, shouldn't be a big hurdle. And if you come in not knowing, you'll be able to, because it's all plain text, it's all readable, so, so that's easy enough. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the really specific Git things with some definitions of some terms that you're gonna need to know if you're gonna use GitHub. So a commit is an important term. It basically means to save something. And if you look at this, this um, graphic that we pasted in here, you can see commits on August 3rd, merge pull requests, add numbers. So like merge pull requests is a commit. It's it, you necessarily, and we'll get into what a pull request is, but it's really any kind of update to the file. It doesn't have to be like you added, another, you wrote something into the file or you edited something or deleted something. It's any kind of update to the file. So. So, you know, all of these are commits, up, but, but you want them to have a useful message. So you'll see, I guess you don't see the messages in here, but what happens is when you, like for instance, you see here where it says add numbers to MD. Okay, what does that mean? Hopefully in the commit, she's written what exactly it is, it is that she's done. So that it's, it's as much for your own sake as for your collaborators, because there's nothing worse than going back and not remembering what you did, right? When you try to replicate it. So we will we will get into this with um with a demo an interactive uh, you know everyone's going to try this out but yeah just think of commit as saving something and what's nice about this system is everything is saved and even if you undo it so it's not like a word document right where you save something and then you delete a paragraph and you save it again and that's gone that instead of a of a saving a new version of the file that's just a commit right so you've committed your change, but you could back up and you can say, no, I didn't mean to delete that. And you can go back to the commit before that where you have that paragraph. So it's, it's a kind of a more flexible version of saving changes. Um, so branching and forking, we've talked a little bit about forking. Branching is kind of within a fork. So if you have your own repo, you, which could be, you know, something you created, or it could be your fork of the Turing way. So let's say I'm working on my Alden C, the Turing way repo, which is the fork. Then I can branch within that and I can make changes in a branch. So then instead of affecting the whole repo, I'm just gonna affect this little part and then to merge that back into my fork. And then I can take my whole fork and merge it into the main. Um, it's gonna get, 
it's basically like a temporary branches are meant to be temporary right like so your fork is going to stay but your branches are where you can do little pieces of work and then add them in and, and we'll, we'll show you that too i guess everyone's going to work off of a branch right in the in the um the demo okay so whoop. Yeah, so this is an example of a fork. So you have Alan Turing Institute, the Turing way, and then Anne forked it. So she has her version, which is Ailey Steele, the Turing way, just like I would have my old and Z version. Whoops. Um, so the difference here, why you might use a fork or a branch, a fork is because you don't, you're not actually added as a collaborator in a repo. So if there's a public repo on the internet on GitHub, and, and there are tons of these, I mean, this is, Kind of the essence of github like software you know a lot of people will develop software that they want other people to use they want it to be freely available so they just put it on github and they say anyone can take a copy of this and of course they don't want any old person who they've never met never spoken to trying to make changes to their software right so that's when you just grab a fork because you can do whatever you want with it you can download it on your own computer you can change the software entirely you know if it's a software that draws a dog you make a draw a cat and but you know the original person they don't want to draw a cat so they keep their, their version right you have your fork um sorry is that loud there's some kind of truck going it's okay um so and then when you have your forked copy you're going to work on that but if you do want to bring it back into the main repo that's when you make a pull request and that's really just what it sounds like it says pull this back into the main repo i'm, I'm requesting that to be done so you can't just and again because you're not an official collaborator there are different levels of permissions and things but if you're not an official collaborator, you know, you can't just make changes. So you have to do this pull request, which is saying, please let me let my changes be added to this code or this document. And then the person who created it has the has the power to say yes or no, or maybe ask for changes. And this is where, you know, within the pull request, similar to an issue, you can have discussion. So you could say, here's what I want to do. And then someone could respond and, and you could discuss it there as well. So Okay, we did that pull request would add your changes from from a branch back in the main and then in order to fulfill that pull request what you do is called a merge and a merge is is also another important property of github because what github does is it compares the two things right and say you've got you know a text here that's got one paragraph and my new version i've just added a paragraph so github's gonna say okay this can be merged because i didn't delete anything all i want to do is add right so i'm not destroying anything if I had taken stuff out and then someone else had added something in the same place and changed the order of things, then we might have to, we'd have conflicts, right? Because the two versions can't just be, be merged together seamlessly. So that's why it's a, you have a pull request and then you have to perform the merge manually to ensure that it's done correctly. And sometimes you'll have to go through line by line and say, okay, I want this version, I want this version and, and make it make, it make a, a, a cohesive final version. So we're ready to dive in. <laughs> um, so yeah, is um, let's see. I guess I should share GitHub now. Is everyone in successfully as a collaborator? Uh, not yet, Alden. Um, so maybe if you can go ahead and uh, demo it live, and then um, we'll make sure that everyone's set up in there. Okay. Um, and I realized I opened the wrong page. So give me two seconds to find <laughs> the one we're working on. Is this it? Did we create one for? Oh, we have a question from Manji in the uh, chat. Do you merge a fork back to main? Yes. So the idea is, is that you can create your, you can fork a, uh, your version of the repository, make your edits in your own version, and then make a pull request that the uh, uh, previous, um, sort of the originator repository pulls your changes back into its uh, into the main repository. So that's what a, a pull request is. I've made some changes and I would like you to pull them into uh, my repository. Yeah. And you can also merge your own branch into your own repository, whether it's your original repository or fork. Branches are also merged, right? So the term for mer you merge a branch, right? Okay. Yes. So what I'm going to do, we're in here in this little GitHub workshop. We, so this is 
let me just give you a little, I'll give you a little tour of the Turingways repo, right? So this is the repo. If I want to fork it, I go up here. See, can you, can you all see my mouse? You can see that pop up, right? Um, so there's a fork button. I'm not going to do that right now. I have permissions in the repo to, to add things. So I'm going to go in and, and just want to show you. So we've got this, this .github file is a file that exists in every repo. It's kind of housekeeping stuff. Um, readme is an important file. So you'll see there's always a readme, which is what shows up here. So that's basically what's this repo about? Why is it here? What can you do? How can you contribute? Stuff like that. We obviously won't go through all of this because it's a very, very large and complex set of, of files. But you know, you're gonna always have things like a license is very important to say, you know, how people can and cannot reuse this or what they can do with it. Code of conduct, that's important too for the for the book dash. And, and we'll definitely be sharing that, making sure that you know everyone in the community is, is abiding by the code of conduct. Um, but but the key thing, you know, the really thing that where the book lives here is called book. And if you go in there, you're gonna see website. And this is where all the chapters are, right? So communicate. So these are broken down into the handbook. So community handbook, and it's got all these chapters. Um, so yeah, then you can see, and now I've gotten down here, they take the form of these markdown files. All it is is a simple text file. So I'm gonna back out here because we don't wanna be in the book. I'm not trying to change anything in the book right now, but we are going to go into workshops, um, GitHub workshop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a file so we're gonna call this 2023 May intro. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add all your names. Um, some order that you are showing up on my GitHub, I mean, on my Zoom. Wow, I'm just messing those up today. Federico. Whoa, just got echoey there. Okay, so I've created this file. Now what you're gonna see, well, I haven't really created it yet. I've, I've written it, but without committing, this could be lost to the ether. So if I didn't commit right now and I you know, closed the window or my internet crashed, always commit, even if it's a teeny tiny thing. Because again, a commit, it's not some big change. It's just saying, okay, I did this now. And you can back it up. You can take it away, you know, but you always wanna commit things because then you can go back and, and kind of figure out what you did and figure out what you want the final result to be. So I'm gonna commit changes. What's gonna happen? Here's my commit message, right? So my message is I created this file. Great. So I'm gonna say created list of participant names for demo. You know, basic description of what I'm doing. Obviously this is fairly simple and straightforward, but it's, it's an important thing to add a good description because it helps, especially when you're being collaborative. For instance, Emma, if it's the middle of the night in New Zealand and you're asleep, you want your collaborators to understand what you did. And so that's what this message is for, for other people to know what you're doing. But like I said, also for yourself, because if you really do use GitHub and you come back two years later and you're like, what the heck was I thinking? Your commit messages might tell you. So, I, and then what it's gonna say is create a new branch for this commit and start a pull request. So I can't commit directly to Maine, because it's not allowed. Um, but what I'm gonna do is create a branch. So I'm actually working in the main repo instead of in a fork. So right now, all I'm doing is creating a branch, which I'm then gonna to request to pull back into the main repo. So I'm gonna, you know, the, these automatic names pop up, but it is actually quite useful to give your branch a good name as well for the same reason, more for yourself. So that when you're like, what was I working on? You could find the branch. So I'm gonna say GitHub, intro, I'm gonna propose changes. And then this will give me open, this goes directly to open a pull request because that was what, you know, it's a great branch open a pull request. That was kind of the automatic flow in GitHub. Cause it, you know, it's trying to help us out. It wants to direct you in the right, in the right direction. Um, so you can see here it's comparing, base is main, compare to my branch, Alden C GitHub intro, able to merge, which means that, um, like I said, there are no conflicts. I can just add this because of course I'm just creating a new file out of nothing. So I'm not conflicting with anything existing. Um, so it's, it gives me this automatic merging, um, able to merge. So, and then, the, oh, then there's this whole bit about like, you're supposed to summarize what you're doing. 
I'm not going to do that right now because we don't need to spend time on this, but you do want to read, read this. So it says, please com complete these sections. So this is basically expanding upon your, <laughs> yeah, there's an ice cream truck. Now you can hear that. Um, <laughs> you know, park outside. Um, it's expanding, you know, expanding on your commit message. So, and, and oftentimes what will happen is you might merge not just one commit, of course, at once. Okay, I'm gonna close the window. I'm not gonna stop. Um, you might be merging multiple commits. And so it's not, it's more than just the one commit message. It's like, what is this whole pull request about? I've added a chapter. Like if you're adding a chapter, you need to write the chapter. You also need to like add it in the table of contents and do some other things to make sure that it shows up in the book. So you're gonna do one big pull request to say, okay, here's my chapter, here's the table of contents fix, here's, you know, so it's it's gonna be more than just the one thing. So this is where you write that. You say, here's what I'm trying to do. And you're, again, you're, you're speaking to your collaborators, why why I wanna do this and what it's gonna fix. So it, or, you know, it's not always a problem, you're maybe sometimes just trying to do something new. But if there is an issue, you wanna put that issue number in here because that, it links everything together. It'll say, okay, this work fixes issue number 10, you know, and then, and then you can link those together. So then, yeah, so if you're doing real work in here, you're gonna fill out these and answer these questions. So acknowledging contributors, this is an important one. So you can, so you can put in new contributors right in here. Should I put it, should I put them all in right now? What do you think? Or let, it'll, they'll get to be contributors when they write in it, right? Sorry, I'm talking to Ariel. Yeah, 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 they'll get to be contributors when they write in it. So I think we're over, okay. okay. So we'll let you all be, get your own, because you're gonna get a little welcome when you, when you first contribute. So I'm gonna create a pull request. Do, do, do. And then so someone has to review it. So I'm gonna assign, so here I'm gonna assign Ariel really quickly. Nope, yeah, there she is. And then all she should have to do is go in there. And so there are these automatic checks. Again, it's not, you know, in the case of the book, those are very, very important because you want everything, you don't want something that's gonna break the book, right? Like if you mess up some text, it's always possible that you'll change some underlying infrastructure code and you'll mess everything up. So these checks kind of make sure you're not gonna do that and make sure it's gonna work. Um, so once we get a review, I heard the bing bong, which sounds like maybe I got an email about it. Some checks haven't completed. So see, it's just, it's just checking against all these rules. It's all automatic. And this last one, deploy.netlify, that's just a good one because it gives you a preview. So if you were editing the book, what you would do is go into details here. Well, maybe not, I'll take that back. You should be able, I think actually, I think once it's done pending, it'll give you a link to the preview. And that's really important when you're actually working on the book because you want to make sure you haven't messed up the formatting or done something weird. So, we, Oh, here we go. It'll show up. Oh, that's the log. Ariel, did you get the notification for review? I did, yes. I can just. So this is, you know, like we said, everything's collaborative. You don't want to be just making changes all on your own. So that's why you need, need a reviewer. And, and again, you just go up here on the top, click on the gear and get, get that reviewer assigned. You can assign multiple reviewers, but only, I think only one actually has to um, review it for it to be able to go through. Yeah. And Alden, if you stop sharing your screen, I will share my screen and Perfect. show and go through the review. Perfect. Let me find, there's my Zoom button. Perfect. Okay. Great. So here we are, create May 23rd intro. So you should be able to see here, I've got a nice yellow notification up the top that Alden requested your review on this pull request, which is great. Uh, so I can add my review here, or if you're just looking at um, a pull request you're interested in, you can go directly into the files changed and have a look at um, what's going on here. So um, I would go in, I can um, check to see what's been added and these green squares at the top mean that um, 
lines in this file have been added. If there were um, red squares up the top, that would mean that there have been lines uh, removed um, from the document. Um, and you will also see um, in some cases if lines have been changed as well in um, a pull request. So um, there's two ways of doing a review. You can uh, comment here. Um, so you can click, you can hover over a particular line and click the uh, blue and white cross button and that will allow you to write a single comment in here. You can also suggest um, changes. So uh, I'm going to suggest that we do Emma Chapman as opposed to just Emma on here. Um, and then you have a choice of just adding a single comment if you really just want to be like, oh, that's a typo. Um, or you can start a review as I'm going to do here. Um, once you've reviewed, once you've gone through the whole thing, you can also, um, if there are multiple files to change or to check, you can click here to indicate that you have finished reviewing um, this particular file. Um, and you can also use this button over here to comment on the file. And what I'm going to comment here is um, note that this file needs the suffix .md to be valid. And that will change it into a markdown file. Um, and I will add. <laughs> I will I will add that comment. So there we go. So we've got a couple of changes I've recommended. Um, and then I can then go to finish my review. Um, now I have enough um, uh, powers here that I can either comment, so just submit general feedback. Um, this is very helpful if you're in the middle of drafting something with someone and you want to just kind of, you know, share um, their, share your thoughts on a, a draft that you're in the middle of. You can approve, you, so you can submit the feedback and approve merging the changes. And so then it's up to the um, person who created the pull request to decide if they want to go ahead and merge or they want to address your changes beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, or you can request changes. So it's not an approving review. You say you must address this feedback before merging. And I am going to click this one for Alden because I think we need to <laughs> update the .md. So I will submit that review and I will say, um, please address. Oh, that's not working. Please add suffix to file before merging. And I will request changes. And there we go. And then you will see now we are, my review was submitted successfully. And therefore, if you go to the conversation and you scroll down, you can see that I have requested changes. You get a little red button here. Um, and then Alden will have the opportunity to commit my suggestion about Emma's name um, and also to address this. And then she can request my review again. Um, and I will accept it and get it merged in. Um, that is quite a whistle stop tour. Do, does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask at this point about going through reviews or opening pull requests and things like that? Oh, well, should we go and see see what happened on my end now? Yes. So yeah. I go back, same spot, but I'm just going to reload. I'm going to see what happened here. Same thing Ariel's seeing, right? Which is please add the suffix to the file. Okay, so what, Ariel, if I don't commit your suggestion here, will I still be able to merge? You, so I think you'd need to. Um... I think you might need to request my review again for an approval and then I can go out, go ahead and review and approve it. Okay. But if I if I well, but they're here. Okay, well let's let's see what happens. Let's okay, I'll commit the suggestion. Um changing her suggestion. Um, 
that's easy. It really makes it easy, right? Like I said, they want you to kind of follow this process. So, so that's great. And then here, so what I need to do, I'm back, I'm here at the top of the pull request. You see files changed. I'm gonna go back to that file. I'm gonna go, wait, can I edit it? Yeah, edit. No, that's the PR. Edit file. And I'm just gonna put dot md. And I'm gonna get those changes. Added dot md. And so I'm gonna put it in my same branch here. Right, because I don't want to be making a branch on a branch because then I would have one branch that had the original changes, one branch that had this new change. So I'm going to keep it in this branch. And then I'm going to go back to conversation. Go down and then I should be able to resolve this. So done. Resolve. And then it's just got to do checks completed. I think it still needs you because since you requested that change and it wasn't something I could just click on, I think you yeah. might have to review. That was fine. I can add another review. Don't yeah. worry. So I can Great. Re request review <laughs> just to okay. pick up with more emails. All right. Final time on my screen. Here we go. You should be able to see. I can check that uh, this has been updated. That's been updated. Emma's name has been updated. So I viewed that, reviewed the changes, approve, do a little, little emoji and submit my review. And so now, all done on your end, you should be able to squash a merge and I will uh, let you do that on your end. So generally the, the kind of etiquette that we follow is that the person who made the pull request in the end is the person who performs the merge. Yep, you might need to refresh it just to make sure that, yeah, there we go. You probably noticed sorry, that Ariel had the ability to merge it there if she wanted to. Um, so, you know, if we were chatting, I'd say, yeah, go ahead and merge it. But I'm gonna go back, I'll merge it. So I'll hit merge pull request. So why is it squash for you? You get to squash it, I just get to merge it. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> same, same thing, title, um, description, confirm merge. Okay. So and now it's be, merged. It should show up at close, as close, shouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Maybe it's. So it takes a little time to sort of live there update, you but they merged. Go. So now let me just go back to the repo and I'll show you how it exists there. So I go back into workshops, I go into GitHub workshop, and there we are, 2023 May intro. I did not do as complete of a job of the date as other people. But now what we have is this lovely file. So what we want you all to do is to go in there and add something. I guess Emma can't add her last name. <laughs> do we have time for this? And then and then, uh, then you can all do um, a pull request. So I, I saw you two chatting in the in the Slack, but I, I'm not sure what's going on. Are they gonna have to fork or are they gonna be able to do branches? Uh, so the people who have signed in and given us their GitHub names have been added um, as contributors with right access. So you should be able to go in to this um, file and um hit edit and open a pr on it so yeah so that's that's one thing we can do alternatively we can also um work through one of the model um github issues that we have open we have three of those that we can also practice with the team so it's actually it's it's probably up to um up to the folks on the call, would you like to have a go at editing um, that document or would you like to uh, yourselves? Uh, so the, the branch deletes itself once it's once all of the changes have been merged in. 
that's a that's an automatic thing so you don't it will retain a memory of the branch sort of being there but it won't be listed as an active branch anymore preferences should we run i guess do you all feel like you want to go hands-on and try this in the, yeah yeah emma in the, in the workshop we can uh we can split you up into breakout rooms and uh have you have a crack at one of these issues or you can um you know GitHub account, like or do, like if we make breakup rooms, we could make we can put each of the ones that have uh, access into different rooms, so we can all see what that person is doing. Yeah, yeah. I've, accept I've accepted the invitation, so I'm looking at the um workshop file now. Yeah, great. Yeah, um, Ariel, I think you're the host. Do you want to just make three breakout rooms? Yep, I, I've done that. Um, so I will open them now. We've split you up into pairs in there. Um, and uh, yeah, so the plan would be for you to go into these rooms and um, pick. I guess pick one of these um, good first issues to work through and edit yourselves and open your first pull request. Does that make sense to folks? You can also find the links directly to these um, uh, issues in the um, shared document as well. But I will um, will add them in here too, just in case. So we've got this one. So there's one, there's two, there's three. Great. Okay, I will open, I'm gonna uh, pause recording for a second and we're gonna open all the rooms. Anyone else have any? Anyone else have any questions at all? Um, yes, Ariel, from our group, um, we used the the GitHub that we were using with Alden, uh, the, the one that we was using with Alden, and we just wanted to make sure that Alden accepted the pull request from Emma to make sure that we follow the all the circle. Yes, I yes, can. Sorry, see. I'm going to do that now. I, I've been I've been too focused on the Zoom. I didn't notice I had I had this review request. Um, give me one second. Too many windows. Always the way. And I've got you. Yeah, I've got my my, uh, my big screen above my laptop, so I'm like, which way does the mouse go? Because they're not next to each other. Okay. Okay. Deep. No, I don't want the preview. Mm -mm -mm. So is that, there's a PR? Yeah, there should be a PR from okay, Emma. Okay, cool, great. So Emma took out her last name, okay. Oh, and you got, okay, so I'm gonna, I wanna share this all with you because you should see what happens when you- We get, can still see your presentation. I know, I'm, I'm switching it over. Can you see it now? Yes. You know, all contributors bought. So this is when you contribute, you're gonna get this, thank you, thanks. Um, that, that shows you that you've been added as a contributor. And then she requests a review. And so I've just got to go in here, review required, all checks have passed. So I'm going to go back up to where she said took out last name, files changed. Okay, easy enough, took out the last name. I can, I can get behind that. So I'm going to leave a comment, looks good, comment. Approve, submit review. Okay, so now you are, you got all nice green checks because you are ready to merge. So if you want to take over that. Um, yep, I can now merge pull request. Yeah. 
And yeah, that, first pull request, first yeah. pull request. So see when I go back in here, workshop. So now see I'm just on the I'm on the main branch. I'm in the in the main repo. Uh, GitHub workshop. Ta-da! You changed it. Good job. <laughs> so yeah, great work, everybody. Um, I know, I know it's a lot. Congratulations message too. I love the I love the messages. Thanks. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're great, aren't they? We really like those um, being set up. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, are there any other questions? Um, you have all our email addresses at the bottom here. We, I really do want to point out, and I put this in the chat. Um, the big one is Slack here. So if you can join the Slack by the time of the book dash, you're going to get a lot of information there. Um, especially during the book dash, we're going to do a lot of communication there. So if you've never used Slack before, now is a good time to uh, figure out how that works, get it downloaded. You don't have to download it, but the, the it is nice to use it in the Slack program rather than in the browser. Um, and oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not sharing that with you. I'm looking at my screen, I'm referencing my slide, but I'm talking to you about, I'm not sharing that with you. So. <laughs> Share. You're like, what are you going on about? Um, let me just, instead of making you read this link, I'm just going to copy it, put it in the chat. Chat, chat, chat. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. Cool. So do that. Um, resolve conversation. So that's what I did. Just to like when Ariel said, fix the, the title of this um, document so that it works, add the .md. So I wrote in a, a comment said, okay, I did that. And then I hit resolve conversation. So that basically just ends that little, that chat within there. I think someone could reopen it if they wanted to, but I don't think it actually performs any actions on the underlying file. It just is about the conversation happening in the pull request. So, yeah, any other? Any other questions, concerns? Do you feel like you have resources that will get you where you need? Like I said, seriously, feel free to reach out to any of us on email. Let me put my um, in there. That's my email. But if you get into the Slack, then you can get get the great thing about the Slack and the great thing about this community is if you go on Slack and you write in you know general or community or whichever channel feels appropriate. Hey, I'm having a problem. I don't know how to do this in GitHub. Someone, it won't necessarily be one of the three of us. It could be someone else from the Turing or it could be someone else from, you know, who lives in India or in Kenya. I mean, they could be anywhere. Maybe it's the middle of the night for us, but but Emma, you are go online and there's someone in Australia who can help you. So um, it's a it's a great, it's just a great place to connect with other users. And there are a lot of people who who know a lot of the answers that you might that you might need. So yeah. Cool. Yes, thank you very much, Alden and Ariel. And just a final saying about Slack and the communications between the team. Remember, this is a collaborative project. So that's why we want you, we encourage you to join the Slack channel. But if uh, for any reason you can't, you can email me and I can send you all the information by email as well. This is not the best thing to do, but we can still do it. Uh, if there's anyone here that has not been, I mean, that is not, it's not able to join Slack, you can also let me know here and I can make sure that I can send you everything you might need for the book dash beforehand by email. Anyone? <laughs> no? Okay, great. Oh, that's all good. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. A particular shout out to Emma for joining us quite so early in the morning. Folks, if you're joining us early in the morning or late at night from wherever you are in the world, thank you also for joining us. Um, we hope to see you in the repository on the Slack channels um, and contributing soon um, as well. So have a lovely rest of your day, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And uh, we will hopefully cross paths in the future. Thank you for joining us and participating. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.